So I just got back from the Matthew McConaughey movie, Serenity. Serenity 2019. I need to see normal movies again because my sense of things has been completely, completely and utterly broken and and decalibrated. I want to say people should see this movie. If you see it without spoilers, cool. If you see it with spoilers, cool. This is one of those movies where, like, I, I I didn't see a trailer for it. I don't know how they marketed this, like what they tried to market it as. And I really do want to go check that out just because I am deeply curious about how they uh, what they tried to sell this movie as. But based on the poster, the the poster is accurate for one of the three movies that make up this movie. Kinda? Yeah. All right. So this is kind of... A lot of people were telling me to go see this because it's like they were using Book of Henry as a benchmark, and I don't fault them for that. Book of Henry is actually a pretty decent benchmark for, you know, like, okay, what is this thing? Like, it's probably the most recent um, fair comparison, though uh, I, I would... I would argue life itself, but life itself actually wound up having um, less of an impact than uh, people were expecting. But we're getting a lot of these these days. Is How are all of these getting green lit? Like Book of Henry, Life Itself, Serenity. So, yeah, I can see why people are using Book of Henry as as their benchmark, as their reference point for this. But... The movie that this actually reminded me of the most was The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio. And I don't really blame people. I don't I don't fault people for not having, you know, that reference right uh, right at the tip of their brain, because, you know, that that movie's kind of I don't want to say it's in it's forgotten, but it's definitely uh, it, it has not endured. And not a lot of people really strongly remember it and new people aren't seeing it um but it shares a lot of similarities and if you want to remain on sport i mean this is the thing this is the thing is the moment that we're comparing it's like well it's kind of like it reminds me of the beach it's like book of henry i felt the same as i did during life itself like these are already tells you know it's just just by like referencing these it's kind of given a bit of the game away um so yeah, we're just going to we're just going to go whole hog from now and and just just get into it. So this is three different movies kind of smashed into the same movie. Radio Flyer would be another solid comparison. Wow. Wow, I need to do something other than just compare this to other movies that make you go, what was that? I'm a little bit reluctant to recommend it, unlike Book of Henry. Book of Henry was one of those ones, like, I got out of it, and and immediately it's like, no, everybody go see Book of Henry. Everybody see Book of Henry right now. Um, Because Book of Henry is, like, beginning to end just just a a wild wild trip and uh this is not that um this does not have the same density of of absurdity as book of henry which is why i would say it's a little bit more like life itself uh life itself was one that had like a ton of absurdity at the beginning a little bit at the end, but for the most part, like, and a lot of the ending absurdity is you sitting there going, like, looking at your watch being like, there's three minutes left. 
what are the, where is this going? Um, where, whereas Book of Henry is just like this barrage. Few things will ever quite rise to, uh, rise to that again. So this is not that. And the two, okay. So the first movie, which kind of pairs well with the second movie. So the first movie that makes this up is, is a big fish movie. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a fishing, gotta catch the giant fish movie. Um, man versus nature, Moby Dick, you know, yeah, the fish is going to be, uh, the fish is going to be a metaphor. Um, cool. Uh, the second movie is a noir, um, double indemnity, kill my husband for me kind of movie. And, you know, a, a big fish, a big fish movie and a kill my husband movie. Uh, sure. You can, you can pair those together, I guess. Um, that's fine. And then the third movie is elephant or we need to talk about Kevin or Jerry or the beach no the beach okay so the beach comparison is because video games play a prominent side textual element and just like the beach they don't work well really oh there's also dark city the matrix the Truman Show. Uh, there's there's a there's a lot going on here, but there's also not a lot going on. This is part of the problem. This is actually this is actually a lot of the problem. All right. the The unfortunate thing is that a lot of this movie is just kind of dull. It's it's not incompetently made. It's not you know what the fork is going on. Middling noir. Middling. Got to catch a big fish movie, and and because it doesn't, I can't I can't talk about the problems without just first talking about the ending. Okay, so the movie has two component parts to it: the real world and the video game. The movie largest <laughs> the movie largely takes place in a video game of nebulous origin or I shouldn't say nebulous origin um a kid has made a video game as a path of escapism to deal with his uh abusive stepfather okay most of the movie takes place in that video game this doesn't really hold up very well I I don't I I don't think the writer who is also the director I don't think he understands video games very well there there's like sidelong references to sort of like programmatic elements and rules and you know the kind of like really surface level trappings of like, okay, somebody who understands that like programs are programs and games are programs and, and understands a little bit of the surface level trappings of a video game, but does not actually like play video games or understand how video games work or anything like that. Um, Because once you start going through this and like combing apart for like the actual sort of, use of the video game layer metaphor it really falls apart because it's super unclear like what's actually going on so i'm i'm just go, i'm going to have to approach this on the movie's own terms and i need water so the kid has created a video game version of a place called Plymouth Island that he and his father visited when he was a kid. And the video game version is basically an open world fishing game with a bunch of 
side mini games that you can do as well. Um, but there doesn't seem to actually be a player. Uh, Matthew McConaughey plays Dill. And Dill is in the computer game and is a programmed version of the kid's dad who died in Iraq, right? Okay. Okay, wait, wait. A thing I haven't even mentioned yet. All right, so as part of the misdirection in the noir part of the film is that Anne Hathaway's character is talking to Matthew McConaughey's character about their son who is still back in Miami uh, living with abusive stepdad and as a result of the abuse has like withdrawn into himself and spends all his time playing computer games. And so this element of the misdirection is set up as the, the, the flashes to the kid playing his video games are assumed to be in the same space and timeline as Matthew McConaughey, but twist. It's back up to the beginning now. Dill is trying to catch a big tuna named Justice. Um, and he's slowly losing his mind, and it's an obsession. Moby Dick, blah, 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 all that. Then then a, a femme fatale from his past life walks into the bar, and it switches into a noir. They used to be an item, very, very noir standard. They used to be an item. Uh... She wants him to make her husband disappear because he's he's an abusive he's an abusive piece of crap, uh, and she'll pay him ten million dollars to take him out on his fishing boat and just make him disappear. You know, you go out go out into the middle of the ocean, get him good and drunk, and then you catch a fish, and then oh no, he slips overboard and sharks eat him. After that setup. It then just kind of spins its wheels for a while until we get to the big reveal. Now, there's things peppered leading up to uh, the reveal. So, like, Dill can talk to his son just sort of like there's a bunch of kind of magical realism sort of injected a bunch of, you know, there's like a mystical layer that just kind of keeps coming back. And there's a few shots that... Uh, are are very artificial and are deliberately uh, deliberately aping like the camera angles and styles of video games. Uh, the ability for the camera to you know like pivot around uh, around the player character and and stuff like that. You know they they do foreshadow. Okay, most of the movie ends up being foreshadowing because the story really is super simple once you get past the like weird trappings not much happens once the conflict is set up nothing really super changes even after the big reveal and that's actually part of the problem uh and what makes it really confusing is that the information you're not it doesn't actually change anything and you're you're not you're not sure what's supposed to be accomplished by Dill realizing he's part of a video game and it he doesn't he doesn't rebel against it or I guess he sort of does briefly for a little bit but not really. It's mostly just to pad out the time. This is not a very long movie. It's definitely padding itself out in a bunch of places just to kind of like get to time. 
there's a bunch of really repetitive scenes with Anne Hathaway where she just shows up and is like, you got to do it. And he's like, I'm not going to do it. Well, you got to do it. I'm not going to do it. You got to do it. I'm not going to do it. You got to do it. Okay, I guess I'll do it. Um, and and then the moment he decides that he's going to do it, then it's just a bunch of other characters. And this ends up being the like bulk of the conflict in like a big chunk of the movie is just the other characters who are also themselves part of the video game because they're all part of the video game just being like, you can't do it. You got to catch the fish instead. Don't kill that man. Um, so, like, they he goes out one day and they catch a shark and he doesn't kill him. And, you know, this isn't entirely incompetently done. Like, there are moments of, you know, it's like, hey, tension and release and decent acting. It's just, it's kind of pointless. And not moving very fast, and the 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 twists along the way while it's in noir mode, like they're not very powerful. They don't really change anything. They mostly just stall for time. Um, and then the actual core conflict of the kid versus his stepfather uh, is foreshadowed a ton. But it's just foreshadowed in the same way over and over and over again with these references to the knife. And it's like, so with with these shots of a knife, which is the same. So you're seeing the kid play with the knife, toy with the knife, and you're seeing Dill also have a same copy of the knife. And, uh, and then at the climax... They go out into the boat. So Margot Robbie, abusive husband, Dill, and a character that almost comes out of nowhere as a last minute foil. But this this character kind of comes out of nowhere as a last minute foil, but he was foreshadowed earlier. So it, it kind of, it's like, oh, you know, that, it, that, it's, it's, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So they get onto the boat. They're out on the boat. They know they're a video game, or at least Dill knows he's a video game or is part of a video game or is maybe the player avatar in a video game. I don't know, but he is the only one of them that knows the creator. Oh, yeah, there's an entire... So, the scene with Neo and the architect in The Matrix uh, uh, Reloaded, uh, there's basically a scene like that sort of on the beach with this mousy-looking dude in a suit who represents the rules and that's the character's role like he constantly refers to us i'm the rules oh right no the conversation they have this whole conversation about it's like nobody knows the maker i know who the maker is um matthew mcconaughey mumbles seven tenths of his lines i need more water they hook justice they hook the tuna named justice then they 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 give it to the asshole and hook him in and then let go and he goes flying overboard and then the kid in the real world so the shot is monitor pov like it's even doing that thing you know where they they overlay text so let's you know so if i'm if i'm dead center and i'm typing at my keyboard and then there's just there's just text going up the screen. So like you're seeing you're seeing what's on screen except backwards. It's doing that shot. So it's doing that shot. He stops, gets up, takes the knife, walks out the door, and then comes back in with a blood covered knife. And then it cuts back to the boat. And everybody's on the boat all happy because the asshole's dead. 
and then the camera pulls back into game footage and then back from the monitor and you hear newsreel over top telling you like the real world consequences of what just happened. Okay. So it's like, oh, the kid got super lost in his imagination in this game and there's lots of like panning over, you know, his his notebooks and stuff like that and, you know, montage and there's a really really bad de-aged photo of Matthew McConaughey dressed as a troop um and then here's where for me it actually just went so the very 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 end so the kid is in this very institutional looking room and he's just staring dead into the camera. He's just spiking the lens and, you know, not blinking. And the, the news people are still saying that it's like the kid hasn't talked to anyone since the event. And then it goes back into, it goes back to Plymouth Island and Matthew McConaughey Standing next to it, like he's walking to a payphone. The payphone rings. He picks it up. The two have a conversation. It's like, hey, Dad, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Okay. Hey, Dad, I'm changing the game so that we can be together. Special effects sequence where a whole bunch of things kind of just like a bunch of polygons fly around and things kind of start deconstructing. And then they just reconstruct. And then Kid runs down the pier to the boat named Serenity and like jumps into his dad's arm, jumps into Matthew McConaughey's arm, jumps into Dill's arms. And it's like, yay. And movie's over. Okay. So Matthew McConaughey in the real world is dead. So there's two readings of this final shot. One is that the trauma of abuse and then murdering his stepfather has basically destroyed this kid forever. And now he's just he's just sunk eternally into his mind. And he now just lives in the fantasy world that he has invented inside himself. Or two, he's now dead as well and has killed himself. Um, th- those, are, those are the two readings that are implied by the ending of the movie. Part of the problem is that nothing about the video game layer actually matters at all. It is the movie. Baker Dill's journey is the movie, but at the very end, you're just told that Baker Dill isn't real. And so... And here's this other thing that you're supposed to care about more, and it just it doesn't... It, it ends up landing in a very strange intermediate place. And also there's like allusions and implications that this is actually like the afterlife um, that, oh man, I, I really need to see it again to start like decoding that. Take, take it as you will. Um, I will say though, I will I to, to go back to a caveat like this. I I will say that this movie is probably actually more interesting to talk about than actually watch. It's a it's really interesting to talk about, but it is kind of dull on the most part. Like it's not it's not that bonkers most of the time. 
And a lot of the time it's just kind of a like, okay, but forgettable, you know, genre drama um, with the, the occasional weird stylistic flourish. So, so just in a lot of ways, it kind of seems like there was this, you know, noir script that just didn't, it wasn't long enough. And someone decided to beef it up by adding this twist. And it got made. This is one of the strangest movies that I've seen. And I legitimately, I legitimately for a large part of this, I, I guess this is the unfortunate thing. There's a plus and minus here. I did not know where this movie was going, which is usually a sign of these like bonkers films it turned it turns out that in the end i couldn't really tell where it was going because it wasn't really going anywhere um it it really is a very very simple story once it's disconnected from its ridiculous conceits it is worth sitting through absolutely everything else in this movie purely to be witness to the end of this movie. Even if you know it's coming, it it does not it does not do justice to the experience of of sitting through it and and knowing the twist is coming is just there is a texture to the delivery of all of this that that cannot be adequately communicated by a mere review or vlog or or the the recitation of a stranger uh you you need to sit through it to really appreciate just how weird and delirious the ending is. This is another movie where it's like, okay, so this one is actually, you know, metaphor dense, um, except it just like states all of its metaphors very literally, like characters literally just explain what the metaphors stand for. Even the really blunt ones, like the tuna named Justice, like a character just like basically just explain, like says, like, yes, the the tuna, the, the tuna's name is justice and you are getting justice as you are being killed by the tuna named justice this is justice it's a tuna named justice do you get it the tuna is named justice and the tuna is killing you and its name is justice you are being killed by justice justice is killing you now you are dead at the hands of justice or well the fins of justice the mighty fins of justice it's that kind of movie so it's it's worth it for just seeing how like all of these like all of these parts try to fit together and and just just don't but almost do but don't but they almost do but they don't but but almost, but no, but maybe, but almost, but they don't, but they kind of do. Anyway, that, that was a ride. Um, Serenity 2019, 2019's already off to just wild year, wild year for anything can happen. Who knows what's coming next? I've got, I've got no idea. Movies can actually surprise me again.